me present my PowerPoint. So this is GeoGebra and Function Arts linking uh, mathematics, technology, and visual art. And again, welcome everyone uh, in this uh, webinar. This is just a one hour webinar and hopefully we would be able to, to uh, learn something from it and maybe um, uh, do your own uh, simple function art because we don't we don't have a lot of time so you you can you can uh, do it we can do it maybe 20 to 30 minutes if we have time and then maybe you can continue uh, later right so this is what's going to happen in the next 1 hour so we'll discuss a bit about function art what is function art and then i'm going to show you some of the outputs of the students so i have um, implemented this to several schools in the Philippines uh, from grade 8 to grade 11. And in fact, one of my teacher partner, partners is here, Ms. Jemari. Welcome, Ms. Jemari Malacapo. Uh, most of the outputs that you will see her here are outputs of her students, grade 11 students. And then uh, we will also uh, try to discuss briefly how uh, did I introduce function arts uh, to students? So we'll have a little bit of GeoGebra. And then uh, the, the, um, the most um, prominent um, topic that will be uh, uh, used for function arts are functions, of course, transformation of functions. And then we, have a, we will have a bit of a demo. And then we, why we summarize why uh, function art is important. All right, so let's start. So function art. One moment, it's covering my screen. So function art are art construction whose components include graphs or parts or segments of graphs of mathematical functions. So this is an example of a function art. So most of these are, most of the curves you see are uh, graphs of mathematical functions, although not all, although in some students, although some students uh, use functions exclusively in, in uh, creating their artwork. So, uh, I've collected uh, around 300 function arts from students uh, from different grade levels, and uh, I try to categorize uh, their artwork. And the biggest uh, categories, I can categorize. I categorize them into three. We have um, pure function art, which means that students used exclusively functions in their artwork. So, for example, in this artwork here, the students used uh, functions for all the curves you see. And the second type is called, I call it organic function art. So if you can zoom in, uh, by the way, the red curves are functions. These are graphs of functions. And some of them used uh, conics for parts of the artwork where functions are not possible. So of course we know that if you, uh, want to draw a circle, you can you can type the equations and we know that circles and and uh, ellipses are not functions. So students uh, use these uh, mathematical objects uh, in addition to functions to make their artwork. And some students, on the other hand, uh, just mixed uh, functions with other uh, elements such as conics, lines, segments. And in this case, we have um, images also. So the gloves that you see here are actually uh, images. So students uh, combine images with, with graphs, functions, with line segments, and with other objects to create their artwork. Okay, so 
So I, I'm going to show you some of the outputs of the students and the number of functions that they used. So for example, here, this is from a grade 11 student of um, Gemary, uh, used 75 functions. This is another example, uh, 45 functions. And this is another example that contained uh, 139 functions. So maybe I'll uh, show you one of these um, in, in, in a minute, uh, the, the actual artwork. By the way, if you say if you see the letter M, it means that it, it, uh, the students use mobile phones. So I don't know, maybe here in Europe, you don't have problems with uh, technology, but for countries like us in the Philippines, uh, some students cannot afford to have their own computers. So. So although some of these uh, students can access computer in schools, they couldn't bring it home. So they have to use uh, only mobile phones because they don't have computers at home. So this is an example of an artwork uh, that only used uh, mobile phones. So for example, if uh, we look at the student's artwork, We look at the actual student's artwork, uh, we can see that. So this is the actual artwork of the students. As you can see, the, the shape of the applet is vertical because the student used mobile phones. And when when she saved the, the artwork, this is the 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 the, the shape. It, it's it's um, vertical. Um, and that's opposed to other applets where you can see later that it's a it's a horizontal applet with a, a bigger sizes. So that's that's one of the problems that we encounter. And these are also some more um, outputs from the students. So this one shows symmetry. This one shows some of the applets created. And uh, many of the students love anime. So they usually uh, draw anime uh, as their artwork. And this is another example of uh, anime artworks, and some of them also used uh, landscape. So this one is a combination of of uh, images also and uh, GeoGebra. So these four parts, the sun, the birds, and uh, the person here, these are uh, images and also the, the I, I'm, I'm assuming that this is a coconut tree, but uh, the, all the other uh, elements here are, are GeoGebra, okay? And uh, these are also some of the surprising um, artwork that um, uh, created, uh, that, that were created by the students. All right, so uh, the big question is how do we create function arts and uh, what did they do uh, to to make the students create uh, this artwork, what uh, what are the methods used? So, to create function arts, we need uh, three um, elements. First, we have, of course, the mathematics. The students have to know uh, functions, and uh, functions are discussed, I think, in almost the grade levels in uh, mathematics in the junior high school and the senior high school. I think uh, almost all countries in the world, probably the topics are just in different grade levels, but most of them are, are discussed. Like uh, we have the linear functions, polynomial functions. Of course, polynomials con uh, contains linear, quadratic, cubic, and so on. And uh, they also have to use technology in graphing. And here we use uh, GeoGebra. Uh, of course, they can also use other graphing app if they want. And they also have to have some art, of course. They have to have some artwork 
uh, in mind. And that's the two uh, dimensional visual art. So first, uh, I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with George Brasso. We'll have a little bit of introduction um, to GeoGebra, and maybe uh, you can play with it uh, while um, I'm doing the introduction. So GeoGebra is a dynamic mathematics software for teaching and learning mathematics that combines algebra, geometry, calculus, statistics, and spreadsheet in one package. And if you are familiar with GeoGebra, you know that it's free. You, know? you, can, you can download GeoGebra uh, from geogebra.org or you can also use the the uh, web app so I'm going to to uh, give you the address the, the 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 link to the web app so you can uh, access it so this is the link if you're not yet familiar I'm not sure about your background because steam this is a steam seminar so Maybe some of you are from the sciences, from biology, maybe from chemistry. And in case you haven't uh, uh, used GeoGebra, then you can explore uh, the GeoGebra. So just a little bit of familiarization, if I should. This is the GeoGebra uh, app. So this is, what you call the graphics view. This is where we, we see the graph. And this is the, the um, uh, algebra view. This is where we type the equations. So for example, if you will graph uh, f of x equals x, squared, this is a very basic um, function. So just type f of x equals x and then caret. You know, uh, caret is the like the arrow arrow up on your keyboard uh, for exponent, and then you just type uh, the function and then enter. Uh, and you can also, of course, you can graph most of the basic functions, trigonometric functions, and uh, exponential functions, for example. So you can uh, graph most of the basic functions that are uh, discussed in high school. So I'll give you maybe three to maybe three minutes to just to um, explore the app if you haven't uh, used it. I'll see you in uh, it's two fourteen. So I'll I'll see you in uh, two seventeen. Just just explore. Just play with the app first before we proceed. So you'll be familiar with the next activity.
All right, so it's 2.17. Again, welcome to those who have just arrived. So we have... Uh, We have uh, someone from Vietnam, and we also have someone from my country, from the Philippines. So welcome. Right. So this is the if you we are on the graph GeoGebra. These are the equations. You can try this out. Uh, again, you have to use a caret if you will use exponent, in, in case you are not familiar. So you just have to type f of x equals x squared. You, you have to look for the caret in your keyboard. Uh, it's I think in, in most keyboard, it's with the uh, number six. And uh, aside from the f symbol, the f of x, g of x, you can also use y. And you can also use inequalities. And also not just functions, you can, you can type equations of conics. So maybe let's try. Can you still see my screen? Because I think I've shared it, my entire screen. So for example, f of x equals x squared. And then you, we can also use uh, inequality. g of the x equals, for example, x. Of, uh, y is less than x plus 3, for example. So you can also uh, graph inequalities. And you can also graph. Uh, conics like uh, x squared plus y squared equals one with a circle center at uh, zero zero. And uh, what else? What's our example here? Okay, so that's uh, basically it. that. That's the example so of of uh, graphing in GeoGebra. So. We finished the GeoGebra part. The students know how to, to graph using GeoGebra. And, and, and I guess this is not uh, very difficult to learn. That you can do this in five minutes with your students. And of course, they, they have to know uh, transformation of functions. So this is the artwork that we are going to do later. But before this, uh, of course, the students are to be reviewed depending on, on your um, on the level of the students, if they already know transformation of functions, uh, then uh, it will be easier. So these are the, the activities that I gave students before um, making them draw their artwork. So first, um, this is for uh, vertical translation. So what happens, for example, if you have a, the graph of sine x, what happens if you add 2? What happens if you uh, subtract 3, for example? So we can try this. You can try this on your... Uh, usually, I would let you try this, but because of time constraint, we can, we can do this together. So if you have a sine x, for example, a graph of sine x, what happens if you add 2, for example? So g of x equals sine x plus 2. Now remember, we are adding to the output of the function. And then we have h of x equals, for example, sine x minus 3. So of course, the students, uh, if they are not familiar, by graphing this, they would observe that if you add 2, the graph is translated two units upward. And if you subtract 3, they, the graph is translated uh, three units downward. And of course, you will have to have some generalization if the students are not familiar. The second one is um, horizontal translation. Of course, as teachers, we know this. But again, if we are dealing with students, uh, depending on their level, we might need to review this. So for example, what's, what's the um, example here? So for example, if we have p of x, maybe we can just copy and paste these. Oh, so we should type x squared plus 3x. So p of x equals x squared 
Is it x squared or x cubed plus 3x? Oh, x squared plus 3x. Okay, so what happens if we replace x, all the x's we replace with uh, x plus 1, what happens? So say q of x equals, instead of x squared, we type x plus 1 squared, and then 3, 3 times x plus 1. Okay, so as you can see, the student would observe that if you add 1, the function uh, is translated to units, uh, one unit to the left. And if you subtract 4, for example, if you subtract 4, so minus 4. So this the, the function is translated four units to the right. So this is the uh, horizontal translation. And aside from that, uh, I also give students um, uh, this is dilation. So if you add, if you multiply the function by a certain number, what happens if you multiply by two by three and by by one half, for example? And the students would observe that, you know, as you multiply the function by a number, the uh, vertical distance gets um, larger. So this is uh, vertical scaling. And also, maybe you can show them uh, different functions so that uh, they will observe the, the, the differences in, in the graphs. And aside from that, uh, I also have uh, horizontal scaling. So for example, if you have a, a sine x, if you, if you multiply the input, the input here is x, if you multiply the input by two and you multiply the input by one half, you will see that, um, So let, let's try. So f of x equals sine x. What happens if you multiply the input by two, like two x? Okay, so the, the uh, period gets uh, smaller. And if you multiply by a smaller number, okay, it becomes uh, uh, larger period. So th this is discussed in, in uh, uh, trigonometric functions. So with all this, um, what I did was uh, just use this uh, four transformations. I didn't even uh, talk, I didn't even teach them uh, reflection because uh, when I implemented this in, in the Philippines, uh, it was just a two and a half hour webinar, so I didn't I didn't want to overwhelm students with with a lot of transformations, so they have to figure out the other transformations on their own. And these are the only these are the only uh, transformations that we have discussed. So to, just to summarize, and then after that, the the last part is how do you uh, cut, how do you uh, limit the 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 domain of the function so that you can cut cut in quotation the function so you can create your artwork. So for example, uh, f of x equals sine x, uh, you can uh, just uh, draw a portion of it by just limiting the domain. So you just do, uh, you just type comma and then type the domain. For example, x is from zero, from zero to, to one, for example. So this is just the, the, the portion. So for example, zero to three. Okay, so students would be able to specify this domain to create uh, uh, curves that are uh, appropriate for their uh, artwork. So after this, this is probably one and a half hour. And then for the remaining hour, I would um, we would construct the um, artwork. So I think we will have time to 
we'll have 15 minutes probably to construct your construct your own artwork. So for example, this was the uh, drawing that I used. So I, I use a drawing so that uh, students will see uh, an image so that students will see how how uh, are the functions adjusted. So for example, here I can draw uh, this one looks like a quadratic function. So maybe I can draw a quadratic function f of x equals x squared. So that's the center. I want to translate it two units to the left. So I have to add two based on the what they have learned. So I have to add two to translate it to the left. And then this is a bit steeper. So maybe I'll, instead of one, I'll make it 0 0.5. And so I'm, I'm showing this to students, the adjustment of the parameters in order to, to, uh, to draw the appropriate curve. So still, we have a bit of uh, space here. So maybe I'll, I'll do uh, 0 0.45. Oh, so it's almost, it's almost perfect. Right, so so maybe it's not that perfect, but maybe we can we can make the function a bit, the graph a bit um, thicker, and that's already perfect. And it doesn't have to be really perfect because it it would be hard. And uh, and of course, if students have time, they can do that. So the domain is maybe from this is negative four, so maybe negative four uh, and seven tenths. So the domain is from negative four negative four and seven tenths. So from here up to maybe negative one negative one and so maybe here this is more than a half so maybe negative one and seven tenths probably. okay. And this is also another another um, maybe quadratic function. Uh, but of course, the students can use other curves if they want. No? So maybe it's the same, the same curve, just change the domain. So I can duplicate and then maybe change the domain. What if I re reverse the domain from 1.7, 1 and 7, 10 to 4? and seven tenths. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's not. Oh, it should be minus two, right? So two units to the right, okay? And of course the students will see that they are not symmetric and they will have to adjust the, the, uh, the domain here. So maybe four and a half. So I think you're getting the idea. Or maybe four and six tenths. Okay. And then for this one, maybe I'll have a sine curve or cosine curve. Okay. And this is, uh, we need to have a vertical uh, dilation here. So we need to reduce the height, meaning we have to uh, maybe half of the, uh, the output. And of course we have to change the, the domain. So I think you're getting the idea. So not all, not all of these can be drawn using functions. So I also showed the students, for example, for this curve, of course they can, they can, have several uh, curves to to uh, fit, but they can also use, uh, for example, the the this tool here, um, circumcircular arc. So you need three points. Okay. So then the reason why I allow this because the, not all the students are 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 really fast learners, and you know just to give. Uh, other students, so not, not to frustrate other students who are not very good with functions, we allowed 
them to, to use uh, the other drones, right? So if you want, um, yeah, I can give you maybe 15 minutes to create your own artwork, uh, maybe a very simple artwork. And if you want, you can present it after 15 minutes uh, before we summarize. And if you have some questions, I can also answer them uh, in the chat box. Oh, there's one question. Is it possible to see the animation of the shapes while functions are processed? Of course, yeah, we, we can, we can, we can, uh, I can show you some of the outputs of the students later. Okay, so you don't have to finish the artwork, just, just, just to have, um, just to give you a feel of, of how to do it, then uh, we can, um, uh, see your artwork later if you want. Huh? And uh, we can also continue if you, if you really couldn't finish the artwork because I know it's, it's a very short time. So I'll see you in 15 minutes. It's uh, 2.33. Uh, in 15 minutes is 2.48. So I'll see you in 2.48. At 2.48.
Ah, uh, yes, the recording can be accessed. Uh, I, I have to ask, I'll have to ask for the password. Okay, so one question uh, while the others are doing their artwork. When you are with your students, do you give them the image first? No, no, we do. We, we let them look for the image. If they want to use the, an image, they can do it, but some students just uh, draw uh, their own original uh, drawing. So some of the students also uh, did what I did earlier. Uh, they have some sort of um, image and then they, they trace. Okay, if you have more questions while the others are creating their artwork. You're welcome. Okay, so one moment. I have to to uh, take a screenshot of the names. Okay. If you have more questions, you can also, you can still use the chat box so I can answer them while well, uh, you are creating your artwork.
Uh, can you, can, uh, from Viera, can I input more than one interval for x? Or one function? Uh, yeah, but it, yes, it, it's possible, but it, you will need an if statement. So if, um, yeah, I, I will I will uh, answer that later with the, uh, after the discussion. Uh, it's 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 if something and then if um, it's very hard to explain that, but it, it's a series of if. So I think it's better if you just type the function twice. And then look for, uh, and then specify the the domain for each the interval. But it's possible. It, uh, it's a series of if and then. All right, three more minutes, and maybe some of you want to show your artwork later, even if it's not finished. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I think Zoom. Uh, Zoom does not allow. Can, can we send via Zoom? I don't think so. Let me see. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think Zoom has no capability of sending the picture in the chat. So maybe you can save your, your file and then... Um, You can share your screen later. Okay, let me see. Oh, this one is nice. Okay. Okay. So it's trace the, the, the heart. Mihaela, uh, trace the, the heart with the... Uh, yes, it is a function and a circle arc. Mm -hmm. uh, we must need more time for uh, find the domain mm -hmm. and the... Um, the um, relation for All the right. function. Yes, yes. So I think uh, to to use um, a slide mm -hmm. for uh, find the um, the square function mm -hmm. to be to be easy to find A B C for a um, square function. Yes, yes, yes. But. Now is difficult. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I understand. Of course, we understand. We have a very short time to to, to do it. But of course, if you are given more time, you can you can uh, make it more accurate, more beautiful, more uh, pleasing. All right. Anybody else? Thank you very much, Mayela. With pleasure. Anyone? You can share your screen. I can I can stop sharing. You can share if you want. Any volunteer? Uh, I have to to look at the oh. Uh, Harris, can you please do you want to share your screen, and explain a bit? 
Yes, yeah, sure. Again, a simple piece of art, if we can call it that way. Give me a second. Uh, one moment. Maybe I should make you co-host so you can share your screen. I think I think I should do that. All right. Okay. Yeah. And now, now I think can you see that? Okay. Oh. Also, oh, it's a boat. Very good. Yeah, some summer vibes for the event. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know how we can import a picture. Try to import a picture here like you did before with the Apple uh, image, but I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Uh, I, you're using a, the calculator, so I, I'm usually use the the classic. So if you uh, if it's the classic, you can. I'm not sure because I'm not using the calculator, but but I'm sure there's a way to import. But if we use the classic, I I can show you. The classic, where can I find the classic? I, um, this is the Greek way. No, 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 no. If you clear, if you clear, the, if you clear it, ah, you, you already saved the, did you save the? I hope I did. I'm not sure. I think I rushed this. But the classic, what do you mean? I, if I'm here, where's the ah, classic? Okay. So you have the classic can be, I, I, I have to look for the, I have to look for the link. So jojobra.org classic. So I put it in the chat box. Okay. Thank That's you. the classic. So there's uh let me share. Okay, okay, yeah. So I was online, I wasn't using the app. Maybe that was the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank so, you. So yeah, I always use the classic because it's complete. And uh if you look at the, the classic, you, you have the import image here. So you can import the image. So there's a, a command here. There's a tool um, in the slider, and then you import the image. I did. I didn't have the option. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure about. I'm sure there's a version in in the calculator, but but uh, I don't know because I'm not using it. All right. So yeah, we we don't have a lot of time. So let me summarize, and maybe you can you can email me your outputs later, and we can include it in the collection. So. Um, so let me summarize what we have learned. Uh, so the question is like from from the from the teacher from the teacher's point of view and from the researcher's point of view. So where's the math? Uh, uh, from the initial observation, uh, there's a lot of mathematics that students use. For example, here, the students use the inequalities to highlight the regions. So this is the actual artwork. I just changed the, the color to, to highlight the regions. Uh, so here, uh, the students use inequality to, to highlight the, the different regions that are drawing. And we didn't even uh, teach this to the students. We didn't even uh, teach the students during the webinar. So the one I taught you earlier, earlier these are the only topics that, that we uh, show the students. And here, the students discovered that for the quadratic function f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, if you alternate b, uh, you can create um, symmetric curves. Of course, you have to change the, the domain. So if you reverse the domain and you reverse the design, you would be able to create uh, symmetric curves. And of course, uh, there are some errors. For example, here, the students made an error one in 2200, but here, one in 2900. But this is the only error that the student made, which means that this is probably a typo error. Uh, the second one, uh, this student transformed bonics into uh, functions by solving y in terms of x. So as you can see, the, the, the equations here are a bit complicated because, for example, the, the equation of the, the um, ellipse, he had to solve uh, y in terms of x and then put the, the equation here. And the reason for that is because we encourage them to use functions and we, we told them that, of course, uh, it has some bearing to the, to the score and the, the teacher uh, will, will score the, the artwork and one of the bases uh, is the use of functions. 
And uh, teachers can also see these challenges that, that students uh, encounter. For example, this student in particular, um, he used uh, functions, but the problem is uh, he struggled with symmetry. So none of the pairs here are symmetric. So for example, here he used three and eight five hundredths, but here he used negative three and eight tenths. And that's all over the, the, the pairs, which means that uh, the student uh, uh, lack understanding in, in, in terms of symmetry, which means that the, stu the, the teacher can, can address that misunderstanding, and uh, which means that the teachers can use function arts to, to um, address a student's misconception and address students' difficulties. Some students clearly struggle uh, in creating artwork. For example, here, um, you can see the some of the gluing points are not um, uh, perfectly glued. These are supposed to be glued together. And of course, uh, uh, the, the points are supposed to be seamless. But here, the, clearly, the, stu the students struggle. But despite that, uh, this is one of the students who, who uh, created what we called earlier organic function arts. So organic function arts, as we have discussed, are artwork that use functions whenever possible. So you have, I think you have to give some credit to this student because uh, she, even though she or he struggled, uh, she still used functions. All the, the, the all the red curves here and uh, straight lines are functions. So she only used uh, conics for, for the circular and the, the elliptical parts of, of the artwork. Okay, so to have a bit of a theory, uh, function I think function art is important uh, because uh, it's, I think it belongs, I, I haven't really made a lot of reading. I, I'm, I'm just starting my dissertation, but I think it's, it's under the uh, interdisciplinary and uh, transdisciplinary um, domain, which uh, integrates uh, art, mathematics, and functions. Because in the STEAM framework, uh, many of the STEAM research, of course, you cannot integrate all uh, science, technology, and mathematics, art. You cannot integrate them all. And sometimes you just have to integrate, integrate two or more uh, domains. and. Uh, integrating means it has to be uh, either, uh, well, according to theory, it has to be either interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary, well, at least to, to, to have a better integration uh, in theory. And uh, just to highlight an example, for example, f of x and f of negative x are mathematical symbols. So that's the mathematics of, of functions. And in visual art, in the art part, this can be used to create symmetric art because f of x and f of negative x are a reflection of each other about the y-axis. And the technology part here is that GeoGebra supports the symbol. So if, for example, you have a function f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 5, you don't have to type it again to, to uh, just create a reflection. You just have you just have to type g of x equals f of negative x. And GeoGebra automatically graphs the, 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 reflects the function about the y-axis. And that is where the interplay uh, between the arts, mathematics, and the, the, the technology in, in function arts. And I think it's, it's one of its strengths as a project for students. So uh, the, the key takeaway is that uh, function art, this is this is the very early part of the study. I, I'm only here at, at the JKU for five months. Uh, this is the fifth month of my PhD, but uh, so far we are saying we are seeing that function art may offer students the opportunity to explore their creative abilities while uh, simultaneously simultaneously acquiring knowledge in STEAM, in particular arts, technology, and mathematics. And it also promotes uh, equity. And when you say equity, there are a lot of outputs, for example, that uh, used only, where students use only uh, uh, mobile phones because most of, of them don't have cell phones at home. And maybe I can show you.
the, the, the actual outputs of the students. So these are some of the outputs and most of these outputs are um, used mobile phones with, with this school because they, they don't have computers at home. So at least uh, they were able to join the project uh, with, with a lack of technology, with a very slow internet. This school has slow internet and they have uh, relatively poor students. So they, the students don't have access to technology, but still they were able to join the, 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 the project and were able to create really good artwork just using their mobile phones. So that, that's what I mean by equity. And lastly, uh, Functional arts may also equip teachers with a valuable strategy for evaluating students' comprehension of functions, as you have uh, uh, seen earlier. Uh, we have written a paper on assessing function arts. I think Sir Darren is here, still here. Oh, I think he's not here. So he was here, here earlier, uh, one of my co-authors from the Philippines also. So we have created a framework on uh, how to assess a student's artwork. So we use the Torrance test for creative thinking uh, and creating a rubric and a framework for assessing students' artwork. Okay, so with that, uh, I want to thank you all. And if you want to collaborate, you can email me at uh, the gbbautista1 at uh, up.edu.ph. So this is University of the Philippines. This is uh, where, I, where I'm based. All right, so we can have maybe more time for question and answer. If you want to ask questions, I would be happy to, to answer them. I'm sorry, this is a very short webinar, but this is all we have. No, this is a, a, just one, a one hour webinar. Questions? Oh, thank you. So from Carmen, thank you. All right, so remember my email, if you want to, we can collaborate. If you are interested in function arts and related. Uh... Okay, so you can, you can screenshot my email if you want. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, let me show you before we end. Let me show you the outputs. I actually have a lot, a lot of outputs from students. So these are the outputs. Uh, this is from Aurora. I don't know if Mom Jemmer is still here. And then this is again from Aurora. These are grade 11. And then so these are from this one I showed you earlier. And actually, I've extended, I've extended it to 3D. So I want to show you also the 3D bridge models. That uh, So these are, for example, this one. These are functions, the graphs of functions rotated about the, the y-axis. So the, I've extended this project to 3D, and we're also uh, testing it this to other schools later. These are functions, graphical functions, rotated about the y-axis. Okay, so oh, how do they send? Uh, okay, so I, I'll, I'll answer some of the questions. How old are the grade eleven students? 
So the grade 11 students are around 17 uh, to 18, but we have uh, uh, outputs from other grades. For example, this one from Zamboanga. These are grade eight outputs of grade eight students. So as you can see, these are mostly linear functions, mostly lines. So for, for grade eight, they only know linear functions. So most of these are outputs are, are uh, straight lines. The drawings are straight lines. So this is for grade eight. Oh, grade eight, sorry, grade nine. These are for grade nine. And also grade 10. Okay, so uh, another question. Uh, uh, how do they send their outputs? So what they do is they have to have their own GeoGebra uh, account. So they, they send the URL. So I, I, I um, we create a Google form where they send the URL of their outputs. So it's easier to collect because it's very hard if they, they send it by email. Okay, are those part from Aris? Are those part of 1A? Uh, or for 1B or just simple personal exercise. So this is, uh, in the Philippines, we have we have this called uh, performance tasks. So it's a, it's an additional uh, grade for the students if they have this. And uh, the teacher can require this as part of their uh, output. Uh, how many hours can you give the students for this? Uh, they usually do this at home uh, from, uh, from experience, we give them a month after the webinar to create this, but um, uh, they usually do this during the last three days from the interview. So even if you give them like, at least in, in for those I interviewed, um, they said that then they usually do this a week before the deadline. So I think two weeks would be ideal. But we usually give them a month to, to create the project. Okay. Ah, the rubric. So yeah, the rubric. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's not not really in the class. They 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 can't do this in the class because otherwise they will they will uh, spend a lot of time and uh, they need the class for the discussion. May I know how you grade your students? Please. Yeah, we we for the grade of students. I written a paper about it. And maybe I can show you the what we did. One moment. So this is how we grade the students. Of course, this is I'm not sure if this is ideal. This is for research purposes. But we we um, used the uh, Torrance from Torrance uh, test for creative thinking. So for fluency, we counted the number of functions that they used and the types of functions. And then for originality, we have some some uh, criteria. For example, is the, does the function contain strategic operations on functions, or does the artwork contains inequality to create colors? So these, these are the, we tested it, this in some of the um, artwork and we were able to come up with a score. So we have a paper on this and uh, it's uh, it has been submitted to a journal. So maybe you can, we can give you a copy later. Yeah, it's a Torrance test. So this, this framework was derived from a Torrance test we, we have our own, uh, we tried to uh, create uh, operational definitions for uh, fluency, for flexibility. These are the categories of, or the components of the Torrance test for creative, uh, for creativity. All right. If you have more questions, I will be still, no? I will be happy to, uh, to, uh, to answer them. Any more questions? I hope I have answered all your questions.
you are we are very much welcome. I am going to see you in the seminars if you attend the seminars. I'm gonna be in Catania in Italy for the Kajme, so I don't know if some of you are teaching and uh, you will. Miss Anne, I, I don't understand the question. Do we need do we have to mark presence in the webinar? Oh no, 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 we don't we don't mark the presence in the webinar. So still it's up to the teacher. All right. Thank you very much. Unless you have uh, more questions. If you have uh, more questions, you can still email me, of course. Uh, again, you have my email. All right, so that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, if you need a copy of the video, no. Uh, if, you can, if you want to access the video, you can just email me. And uh, I don't know the password yet, so I think it's generally it's uh, generated by by uh, Zoom. I'm not sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Angelica. Nice to see you here. Bye. Alexis, thank you for attending. And also, uh, and also Mom Jemari. And also from our uh, colleagues in Indonesia. Thank you for coming. And from Vietnam also. Bye. Sorry, I have to end this. <laughs>